Hey, what's up everybody? Ali Drafter back with a brand new video. Today we're gonna to talk about some steps that you can take in order to fix your credit. Lately, I haven't put up any new content on my channel as I've been observing the credit reporting agencies do their shenanigans. So today I wanted to really bring some steps that you can follow, easy to use steps that you can literally follow to get the results when it comes to personal credit. Now mind you, these steps need to be implemented on a step-by-step -step systematic manner to get the best results so that you can potentially obtain the best outcomes when it comes to your personal credit repair journey. Uh, it is to be noted though that these steps will take a bit of time to implement. It's not something that you can do in one shot and then expect results within 30 days. Uh, you have to keep in mind that there's the pandemic, this whole situation with the pandemic, the delays that are inevitably caused by the pandemic in addition to some of the other structures uh, that we need to be familiar with. So with all that said and out of the way, I'd like to introduce you to a four-step sequence when it comes to fixing your personal credit that I've seen time and time again be extremely effective when it comes to getting the positive outcomes, removing those negative items, and of course, increasing your scores so that you can potentially qualify for whether it be a mortgage, some financing short term to help you get out of a bump financially due to the situation that we've all been thrown into, in addition to some additional benefits, such as applying for a higher level of funding or getting a bump on your credit limits so that you can go out there and do what you gotta do. So stay tuned for this episode. Hey, welcome back to the video. So today we got four steps that we're gonna walk you through in order to fix your personal credit. So these steps have been refined over time and the reason I say that is because I had a couple of videos in the past that I've done that I talked quite a bit about structures that are very easy to implement when it comes to fixing your personal credit. These three things you might be familiar with already, such as the PI minimizer technique, a very famous process that a lot of people have picked up on, including my competitors, in reference to fixing your personal credit. This should be the preliminary step on your credit repair journey. The reason why a lot of people fail to use this step is because when they look at personal credit, what they wanna do is right away look at the negative items and try to challenge that and try to be as efficient as possible and try to do all sorts of crazy techniques just solely focused on removing the negative items. But there's a gimmick to that. that It might work and it might not work. There's a 50-50 chance. The goal is to question the infrastructure and how it's reported. We're not disputing. The biggest thing that I'd like to enforce and encourage people to understand as they come to my channel and learn the content here is that we're trying to not dispute stuff. And the reason I say that is it may sound counterintuitive or non-productive because other people are just simply stating to you, hey, when it comes to personal credit, you have to dispute. You have to try to you know, fix your credit by disputing all the negative items. And the reality is it's not a question of just disputing the negative item. You have to learn to question them the right way. So these four steps are going to teach you specifically on how to do that effectively. So without further ado, let's get started. The first of the many, I think, is you guys are already familiar with the personal identifier, but this technique is called the PI surge. So what the PI surge simply means is that you're taking all the personal details that you have across all three credit reports, and you're comparing and contrasting the information that is known to be inaccurate, that is factually proven that the spelling of the information, or let's say the mismatch of addresses, or social security numbers, or date of births, don't match up. It's no longer an individual strategy to attack one creditor or one credit bureau at a time, but rather the collective community of data systems, the people who are basically submitting that data about you to the credit reporting agency and challenging them that way. So our objective really is to focus on that. Our objective is to st structure the, the, the systematic attack in reference to the information that's listed about you when it comes to your personal data. Now there's all sorts of data sets that are out there. We talk about personal names, we talk about you know addresses, we talk about a whole list of other things that are potentially there, but our objective is very simple. Compare and contrast. Take all three credit reporting agency, list out all your personal details, and challenge the ones that don't necessarily correspond to you. Right, so if you have a middle initial, and I always encourage you to remove it because that is a mix up on its own. It's a mix up waiting to happen. And you have the right to modify information on your reports so long as they're inaccurately reporting and of course adjustments based on uh, the accuracy of your current situation. So you can take the three bureaus, compare and contrast them, write them out, and say here's all the list of personal information that is no longer relevant or is inaccurate. I'm requesting that you please remove it and update my reports as soon as possible because this is causing injury to my ability to borrow and my character as a whole, essentially causing defamation in a way. 
So that's the PI surge. It's not an individualized structure anymore. We're not necessarily going with one bureau anymore, but rather we're taking all three bureaus, comparing and contrasting them, and then listing out all the personal details, regardless whether they show up on one bureau or not, the collective amount of data that's submitted, and then basically tr you know, trying to communicate with all three bureaus at the same time about those data sets. That's the first step that you need to concentrate on. The second thing we're gonna talk about is called an anchor toolkit. Now, similar to the situation where you've taken your personal identifiers and listed them all out, especially when it comes to all three bureaus, now what you're going to do is you're going to basically take all the information on the negative items and you're going to ask the credit reporting agencies which personal sets of details do these correspond to. It's like a cross-reference or a crossword per se. And the reason why we're doing this is because we legitimately want to know, obviously, the affiliation of how this information was submitted. Again, we're not disputing this information, rather we're asking it for check of compliance and the check of accuracy, which eOscar, by the way, is blatantly advertising complete and accurate reporting on their website in addition to the systems that are universally used by creditors and the bureaus. So outside of the Fair Credit Reporting Act, stating that the information is supposed to be accurate, when you and I factually look at our reports and can determine that it is in fact the complete opposite, is not only a violation of basic business principles, but also the FTC's advertising guidelines. So going back to the Anchor Toolkit, we're gonna to take a series of all the information that's negative, request the credit reporting agencies, which personal detail sets are these affiliated with, and you request that information as soon as possible because you believe that the information may be reported inaccurately, and you have the right to request modifications and removal of such negative items if the information is not kept up to date in accordance to the eOscar guidelines and compliance procedures. So that's the anchor toolkit. And again, you're listing out all the negative items from all three bureaus on that document. You're not necessarily separating them anymore. We're keeping it uniform. So once you do that, now you have your personal search, which is a list of all the personal details from all three bureaus into one document, going through all three bureaus at the same time. The second document is the anchor toolkit, which is looking at all the negative items and asking the credit reporting agencies of which bureau, or not which bureau, I apologize, which personal details do these accounts belong to and what are they affiliated with and who are they affiliated with just to ensure the accuracy of these items and to maintain compliance and the protocols of compliance. And this is again, not a dispute. So let's assume that you know they, they got that. And then on a one piece of document, a final piece of document that goes all through all three bureaus is what I call the friendly three cues. The friendly three cue essentially means the friendly three questions. These three questions are very powerful because as a consumer, you have the right to request this data. The first would be initially when a creditor submits this data, did they follow all compliant accuracy protocols to continue ongoing maintenance of that account? That's the first question. The second question is, if the negative items that are there have been affiliated with personal details were not accurate for a very long time and you reported them continuously, what kind of sums of fine are you entitled to in accordance to the violations of the FCRA? Can you state the sum? And the reason you're asking that is because you're hinting to them that you may pursue them legally, but you in fact are just trying to get rid of those negative items. But indicating the legalese in it and trying to request a sum that necessarily will give you an idea of what you're entitled to in terms of damages and asking them to come up with that number, specifically given that from the date of which it was reported inaccurately to the date today, could be a couple of months, could be a couple of years, you are entitled to FCRA violations, punitive damages, and so on and so forth. Asking them to calculate that is a very dangerous situation. So that's the second question. And our final and you know third question here is, uh, based on the damage that's already done and due to the emergency and the situation due to COVID and of course the pandemic, uh, a delayed response is not acceptable. Therefore, this, this needs to be escalated. Which departments can you contact to get this escalated and get it fixed as soon as possible? So that's the third and final piece here on the friendly 3Q, which is the friendly two questions. So with that said, you send off your letters and you wait for a response. You wait until you know, they get back to you. Now, while you're doing this, while you're sending your letters, make sure you notarize your documents because your identification, when it's notarized, there's less kickbacks from the credit reporting agency. They cannot say, you know, this looks like it was submitted on your behalf or somebody else did this, but rather you're ensuring under oath that it is you who sent it and therefore the information cannot be kicked back generically stating that, hey, we don't recognize who this is or this information doesn't seem like it's coming from you. To avoid all that, obviously we're getting those documents notarized. 
And our final point here is once we get a response and we're not satisfied, obviously you may have some negative items that fall off, but assuming that you're not satisfied and there are certain things that are missing, what we do is F you with F. And F you doesn't mean the F word, we're talking follow up. That's what F you means. And with F, with friends. What are some of the agencies that are interconnected to your interest as a consumer to protect you? The Attorney General's office, that's number one, right? The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, albeit it was their responsibility and duty to enforce compliance, they're ignoring that. So we can count them as a secondary recourse. But the Attorney General's office is number one. The second, I would say, and it is a very structured way of getting a response, is the Better Business Bureau. You can file a complaint with them as well. And then the third and final agency that I would go as far as is the Secretary of State, but not of your state, but the business's principal headquarter location, such as Experian being Mesa, California, Equifax being, you know, Atlanta, Georgia, and so on and so forth. So file a complaint with their state attorney general's office and the secretary of state as well so that those final complaints reach the credit reporting agencies to get you a timely response. And in your complaints, you will simply state that the credit bureaus fail to adhere to the EOSCAR guidelines to maintain the accuracy of my reports and are being negligent and fail to answer the questions that I've asked them over and over again. And I'm demanding a quick resolution as this is causing further and further uh, injury to me on a financial level and a credit level as well. So that is the final structure and the nail in the coffin. Once you completed that round, it may take up to 60 to 90 days to get appropriate responses. You may get multiple letters from each bureau. It is completely normal, but that is the structure that I encourage you to try out and hopefully you get the results that you're looking for. And again, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in learning a more elevated way and more information on reference to fixing personal credit, starting perhaps a credit repair and education business, or you just simply want to gain advanced knowledge to know the ins and outs of how credit reporting works and how you can protect yourself and your family or loved ones from inaccuracies and of course misleading data, I invite you to check out the Ultimate Personal Credit Mastery 2.0, which is my flagship course. It's actually, the link is in the description in this video, so go check that out. You can also learn business credit. I have a link in the description as well. It's called the Ultimate Business Credit Mastery. I teach about asset protection and a little bit of advanced knowledge on capital raising. Uh, so go ahead and check that out as well if you're interested. And I hope with this video today, you get a little bit more of insights on what's the next few steps that you need to follow to fix your personal credit. Hopefully you do these steps, you get the outcomes that you're looking for, and then you move forward with your personal credit journey. If you have any specific questions in reference to the steps that I just described, please leave a comment in the video on the below of this video. It could be any specific comment related to the four steps that I just described. And once again, if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing and turning the notifications on to all so every time videos like these come up, you'll be the first to know. With that said, this is your guide and mentor, Ali Tarafter. Catch you guys on the next one. Bye for now.